In this introductory screencast, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to use learning catalytics in your classroom. So let's create a course. So I'll create a new course here. I'll enter the name of the course. Then I'll pick the classroom. So these classrooms can be set up beforehand. And I'll create the course here. And now everything is organized around lectures. So let me create a new lecture. And this is where I'll create my questions. So I'll create a new lecture here. I'll pick the date that it's going to be delivered on. And now I can start adding items. And items are just questions that you ask students. So here, let me just create a, a standard multiple choice question. So this will be a question about metal and what happens when it expands. And what I can do is I can upload images. So I'll just hit select files here and upload an image. And then I can just drag and drop the image into the prompt box to add it to my prompt. And there's many, many kinds of questions you can have. But let's just make a multiple choice question for now. And we'll just enter the choices that students will have. So it increases, it decreases. And here I can move the choices around if I want, move them up, up or down. I pick which ones are correct. And I can also type some text as an explanation. And this is what students will see after the class. When they log back in, they'll be able to see all the questions that were asked and what the right answers are and what the explanations are. I can also write some notes to myself. Let me save it, and let me add a second question here. So this question will be a sketch question. I just want students to sketch a graph of a function. And they'll sketch it using their mouse to click and drag, or they'll use their finger on their touchpad. Notice I can put formulas inside dollar signs if I write them in tech, and then they'll render as nice mathematics. So I'll create a sketch question here. So students are basically going to draw on top of an image. So I'll upload a image of Cartesian axes here. And I can pick different colors for students to draw on and all of that. But let me just save this question now. Okay, now I've created two questions. So I'm going to save the lecture. And now let's see what it's like to actually deliver the lecture to your students in class. So what I do is I'll start a new session. And what, this, what will happen now is you'll see a window pop up that will be the student view. And if your computer was connected to a projector, I would take this window and drag it onto the projector screen. But for now, let's see what happens when I try to actually ask a question. So to ask a question, I just click the Deliver button. And the students will see it on their student view. They'll also see it on their devices. And on my screen, I'll also see a graph of student responses as they come in. So let's switch to see what happens when a student logs in. And if you want to try this out, you can take your mobile device, point it at learningcatalytics.com, and log in using your instructor account. And then you'll see exactly what a student would see, and you can even respond to questions like a student would. So a student uses their iPhone or their iPad or laptop, whatever device they want, and they enter this class session ID. And then we ask them where they're sitting. And so this is based on the classroom configuration you, you set up in advance. So as a student, I just pick my seat like I would pick an airline seat, or I can enter the number of the seat. And once I do that, I'll see the first question. So let me answer the question. I'll say it increases. And now after a few seconds, students will see the response that they put in, but they'll also have the response hidden for privacy reasons. So let's go back to the instructor view. So now I see there's two students logged in, and I see half the answers are A, half are B. I can click the seat map button to see where the responses are around the room. And now let's say I want students to discuss their answers. So I'll click Assign Groups. And here I can create groups for peer instruction based on some grouping policy that you can set here. Once I do this, I'll see the round one and round two responses side by side, so I can see if the student responses change before and after discussion. Now we can go to the student view, and we can see that students get a personalized message telling them who to talk to to discuss their response, and they also get a chance to respond again. So when students respond a second time on the instructor view, you'll see side by side the round one versus round two responses. So let's stop the delivery of this question for now. 
When you're ready for students to see the results, you can click Show All Results, and then students will see the results both on the screen and on their own individual devices. So here in the student view, we can see students see the results both for round one and round two. Students have access to these buttons, I get it now and I still don't get it, which is a way to send the instructor asynchronous feedback. So now let's try delivering a second question, this sketch question that we had. So just like before, we'll click the Deliver button. And also just like before, the question gets pushed to student devices. And they can use their finger on their touch screen, or if they're on a computer, they can click and drag to sketch the graph. And once they submit their response, students will see it on their screen, and then instructors will also see all the student responses side by side on the instructor view. So let's say we're finished with this class session. We can click the Stop Session button to terminate the session. And once the session's over, we can review the results if we want to see individual student responses or if we want to go back and review what happened in class later on. Now you can click review results to review what happened in class that day. So if you want to go back later and see what happened or if you want to look at individual student responses, you can do that from this screen. And you can do that for every question you asked in class. So here we have the results from the sketch question that we asked. And we can look at both all the responses together like we saw in class, or we can look at individual responses. And you can mark these responses correct or incorrect if you want to use it for grading purposes. And that's it for our introductory screencast. For more information, click on the Help tab.